Now, don't forget, keep the aggression all the way. Welcome to this special FA Cup semi-final edition of the big match. And our semi-final is the one between the underdogs, the one with the spice of cup football about it. And the romance too, as third division Crystal Palace meets Southampton from the second division at Stamford Bridge. Also today we're going to show you for the last time our golden goals of 1976 and you get your last chance to vote. But of course, overriding everything in football this weekend has been the semi-finals of the FA Cup. And today we bring you more than just a game, really. It's more the way a semi-final day unfolds, beginning in the late morning when both dressing rooms at Stamford Bridge are already kitted out. This is the Southampton dressing room. All the equipment is there, including the medical equipment. And on every shirt you'll notice there is a match programme. And here's the shirt due to be worn by the man Palace probably fear most of all, Mike Shannon. And beneath that shirt, you'll see that the boots are there that might have quite a bearing on this coming semi-final. All quiet and peaceful, and in the Palace dressing room, the other side of the tunnel, the white shirt's hanging up, and David Horn, one of the Palace training staff, is fitting the required studs to his players' boots. Then the teams arrive, and with Palace, of course, is Malcolm Allison. Again, showing himself to the crowd in his usual style with a prediction that says a 4-0 win to Crystal Palace. But what about the Southampton manager, Laurie McMenemy? Well, I'm, I'm tingling a bit, but um, because I'm so excited, when I saw, I was red and white all the way along the road. Uh, we got a tremendous welcome. I'm so thrilled because they're notoriously quiet people down there, and they've really turned it on so far. Um, but I'm, I'm tingling a bit because I feel like a winner. I, I don't think I've felt so much like winning on any Saturday this season. By now, it's a wonderful atmosphere outside with banners at both ends of the Stamford Bridge ground. I can't remember seeing quite so many banners at a semi-final game. And we also get a privileged view inside the Palace dressing room, the clock showing coming up to a quarter to three. Terry Venables giving some last-minute instructions to his number eight, Jeff Johnson. And you can imagine the pressure and the tension amongst those players there. But soon, it'll be down to the players themselves. As the teams come out, Palace first, with Peter Wall leading them, because, of course, skipper Ian Evans has a superstition about coming out first. Will these players be the first third division side to reach an FA Cup final at Wembley? For one thing, they'll be glad that the waiting is over and they can get out onto that sunlight pitch at Stamford Bridge. And they are quickly followed by Southampton, led out by their skipper, Peter Rodrigues. Jim McCalliog is there, Peter Osgood is there, and behind Peter Osgood, the quiet man, Nick Holmes. Behind him, the goalkeeper, Ian Taylor. A substitute Hugh Fisher, Paul Gilchrist and Mike Shannon, and David Peach as well. They'll be glad to get out there too. And now let's take a check on the two teams for this FA Cup semi-final. First, Southampton, the news that Hugh Fisher has a groin injury. And like the good pro he is, he told the manager that he wasn't fully fit, so the number seven shirt goes to Paul Gilchrist. Rodrigues, McCalliog and Osgood, all aware of what cup football at this level means. They've been through it before. As for the Crystal Palace side, as you've seen, Peter Wall is fit to play in the back four, but Martin Hinshelwood is missing from the sixth round side. He's had a cartilage operation. Jeff Johnson is eight in a team that has brought a lot of colour to this cup competition this season. Pat Partridge and Bishop Auckland is the referee, and now the 52,000 crowd waits for the off. So Peter Taylor of Crystal Palace gives this semi-final the first touch. Palace attacking the goal to our right, of course in that white change strip of theirs, allowing uh, Southampton to play in their normal strip of red and white stripes and black shorts. Wembley could be 90 minutes away of the most stress-filled afternoons that most footballers will experience when it's so near, and yet it could be so far. 
Palace striving to become the first third division side to get to an FA Cup final. Guided there by their manager, Malcolm Allison, of course. And Hammond just getting that ball. A puff of his cheeks. Peter Osgood, it's the number nine. Peach. Evans. Blythe, Gilchrist. Jim Cannon. Free kick for a foul by Swindle, uh, on Swindlehurst by Blythe. That's his free kick. And here's Alan Whitton. He really does seem to be in the mood this afternoon. That pass not quite finding Chatterton, though. Cannon. The Cutterberg. Good ball for Peter Taylor. Palace have got Ian Evans right up for this situation. Jeff Johnson. Brady's dead now for Derek Jeffries. Hit and hit well. No more than a yard. Too high by Derek Jeffries, which in fact uh, was as close probably as he's been to scoring a goal all season. Whittle, a nice backward header there for Swindlehurst. Whittle again. Palace ball. Peter Wall, you probably saw there, slipping. That's not the first time he slipped this afternoon. A Calliog. Peach. Evans. Osgood. Made for Stokes. But Derek Jeff is there. And Osgood went in badly on the back of Jeffries there. Absolutely uncalled for. And referee uh, Pat Partridge. Bringing him to order. And giving Palace a free kick. It's with Whittle again. They're giving him plenty of work this afternoon, sensing that he's in the right frame of mind. Actually, a Palace player, I don't know, it's Peter Taylor. Who's in trouble. With 17 minutes gone. Didn't see how that happened. But what a critical blow. And a critical moment that could be. May have twisted his knee and turning. Certainly, I wasn't aware of any clash that he had with... Uh, any Southampton player. Well, that'll be a worrying time for Palace fans and for their manager with the hat now being adjusted, Malcolm Ellison. And he seems to retain a sense of humour about the situation. And the cheers from behind the left-hand goal as Peter Taylor gets to his feet again. Backward header. Ian Evans. David Peach there first. Wall. Jeffries, a touch for Holder. Nearly ran into trouble. Taylor just getting a touch to it. And Taylor, I think, is in a bad way. Certainly didn't seem to relish that situation at all. I wonder what's going through his mind at the moment. between Holmes and Holder. They're both on their feet again, though. There's McCallion now. Tries to find Osgood. A great chance here for Southampton. Oh, and Hammond did so well to close so tightly on Osgood. And Osgood...
could, you could see from his face, he knew how close he was to that vital opening goal, as that long pass from the left found him, and it seemed for a moment that the goal was there for him, until Hammond came and blocked it. Jeff Johnson. Now, tending to lose the ball a little too often for their own comfort, Palace at the moment, as Osgood now tries to feed Shannon, beautifully stopped though by Jim Cannon. Here's Holder. Played for Taylor. Nice ball there by Taylor for Johnson. Now for Swindlehurst. Whittles in the middle. Chaladon's come up fast as well. Taylor. Little chipped in there towards Whittle. Oh! Looked as though he was bought there by Rodrigues, and it was almost a replica of the way he killed the ball and whacked it into the back of the Sunderland net in the last round. Nice little cross by Taylor. And Whittle, perhaps just a little unlucky there. Holder, Steele. Now Whittle. Steele. Evans only half getting to that one. Wall coming away with it. Whittle up off the ground so quickly and thundering into uh, Mel Blythe. The Southampton free kick. Which Peter Rodriguez will take. Hit well, a nicely driven free kick there towards Osgood, and here's Nick Holmes. Curled in again, Wall getting that one away to Peter Taylor. Peach was right with him. Now McCalliog. Really strong, firm challenge there. And the Palace players claiming there, and again we've got a flare up, claiming that McCalliog went over the top there to hold her. And the referee pulling Jim McCalliog away with that fresh growth of beard. A man who really has had a big influence on Southampton and played well in the middle of the field and Mike Shannon having a word as well. But the name of McCallion will clearly have to go into the referee's book. Giving his name, Pat Partridge, obviously feeling that he's got to deal severely with that challenge. By Jim McCallion, on Phil Hogan. Feet, all right. Palace get a free kick. Inside the last five minutes now of the first half. Gilchrist. And Jim Cannon away. Terry Venables, the Palace coach, who with Malcolm Allison has had so much to do with Palace this season. Obviously, there are very, very tense moments for people on the bench as well. As we come to the last seconds of the first half, Jeff Johnson. And ball, and given. Now, free kick to Palace. Interesting position, an interesting time, and maybe a moment. No, it won't be, but they've got a throw. Ian Evans right up there, David Swindlehurst the other big man, Chatterton and Taylor both in the box also. They've got to get that ball into the box. Well, Jim Cannon couldn't do it. Now Whittle again. But the whistle has gone for half time. A fairly nondescript first half. Both sides very evenly balanced. One very good piece of goalkeeping by Paul Hammond that stopped Peter Osgood getting through. And Palace, I think, a little bit uh, upset by the injuries. Well, Ian Evans was one of them, although he recovered very quickly. And Peter Taylor playing at about 70% effectiveness, as I say. He obviously is suffering more than anybody. 
But uh, an evenly balanced uh, semi-final, and still very much in doubt which of these two sides goes through to the final at Wembley. We leave you for just a moment with a half-time score then at Stamford Bridge in this FA Cup semi-final. Southampton nil, Crystal Palace nil, and we'll be back with the second half. So welcome back to Stamford Bridge. Southampton now get us underway. Mike Shannon on the far side, a nondescript first half. Let's hope for something a little more lively in the second. Shannon now trying to get his men away and trying to get Stokes away. This might be interesting. Stop there. Stokes again with a shot, had it charged down. And uh, Nick Holmes giving a quite easy and simple catch there for Paul Hunt. McCallioch himself will take, releasing Rodriguez. And uh, Whittle was darting after him, even at the expense of a corner. So Osgood Blythe, Gilchrist, Stokes, Shannon, all in that Crystal Palace penalty area. Holmes coming up to reinforce them. Even Jim Steele making a move from the back as McCallioch now takes this corner for Southampton. Osgood with a header just over the top. That look of determination on the face of Peter Osgood as McCallioch floated that corner in and yet again Southampton got a free header in the Crystal Palace penalty area. This time Osgood, but he was too high. from this now Hammond doing his exercises at the other end Palace already with the corner taken and it's with Peter Taylor Peach desperately trying to get back there oh and Evans almost got in there Turner was really struggling as that ball came across not away yet Jeffries Johnson Cannon chance for the cross not a good one. And Blythe there to steer it away to Rodriguez for Southampton. And back to Paul Hammond. While at the other end, Ian Turner must be considering that long floating cross that always had him in trouble and very nearly gave Ian Evans a chance to nod it in. Southampton at the moment looking a better all-round team but only just. Oh. oh, and there's some skirmishing going on again there. 
And Osgood again is in the middle of it. And he really is giving the referee something there, and he can't get away with that. So, Osgood Paul to referee Pat Partridge. And the second Southampton name goes into the book. First McCallion, and now Osgood. And I think Peter Osgood is saying there were four or five of them as well. And I don't know whether he's calling... In fact, interestingly enough, right at the end of it, it's a free kick to Southampton. Well, that really was quite a scrimmage there, involving Peter Osgood. And that's the second name of Southampton into the book. No matter what Laurie McMenemy thinks of that. Played for Derek Jeffers. Taylor. Again, Peach hard at him, and again a free kick. Peter Taylor, who was given the opportunity of making some brilliant long runs from deep positions against Sunderland, has never been in those deep positions this afternoon. I think it must be that his left knee is still troubling him a little bit from that early injury. Can they do something from one of their famous set pieces? Taylor and Holder are the men. Holder making the signal. Taylor with the kick. Floated in there towards Swindlehurst. Oh, and he had a great chance there. That should have counted. Taylor curling that free kick in. And Swindlehurst losing his shadow. Really only just glancing the ball. And a goal kick. So a great relief there for Ian Turner as he takes this goal kick for Southampton. Evans, superb in the air again. Chatterton, a very quiet game, but this pass we'd hoped to get. Well, I don't think that was a corner. The linesman is flagging furiously on this side. Ian Turner saying that never crossed the line. And I'm bound to say I side with the Southampton players on that one. It didn't look to me as though it got anywhere near to crossing the line. And the linesman was a good, what, 40 to 45 yards away with players in the goal mouth obscuring his view. There must be a doubt about that. Well, it will be interesting if the whole thing hinges on this as Taylor takes the corner, floated in there towards Evans. My goodness, that couldn't have been closer. Dane Taylor with those curling free kicks. Again, Ian Evans, who's done so much in defence, getting up. And just glancing it wide. Rodriguez. Cannon. So Jim McCallion takes this throw for Southampton. With just over a quarter of an hour to go. Shannon nodding it back for Gilchrist. Osgood. Gilchrist. Hit well. Goal! Hammond. 
Well, he can see Wembley now, I'm sure of that. Laurie McManamy. And maybe those dreams are fading, and the chairman looks at his watch, and he knows there are now 15 minutes left. Southampton might be tempted to pull one or two. And maybe those dreams are fading, and the chairman looks at his watch, and he knows there are now 15 minutes left. Southampton might be tempted to pull one or two back now. They probably will only play with Shannon and Stokes up. in this packed sample bridge today than Paul Gilchrist. So a free kick to Southampton, which David Peach will take. Good free kick too. A little too high though for Osgood and for Evans. And uh, Hugh Fisher, there he is. 12 minutes to go, he says. And he, I would have thought, showed a great professional that he is, said, I'm not fit to play. And so he did himself out of a place in the semi-final, and indeed his replacement has scored that vital opening goal. Here's Bobby Stokes now. Turned in low, and again, Hammond seemed a little low getting uh, to that one. Took a knock on the fingers for his pains, and really had to get down quickly. And in the end, he just about got there. Paul Hammond with this free kick. Funny header there by Shannon. Palace's throw. And Palace had a player in trouble there. It's David Swindlehurst. South Coast for a great day out. And from South London, not such a happy day. That's the face of the man who scored the goal that could put his side to win. Evans. Wall begging for it. Shannon on the break. Down he goes. And I think it's a penalty, is it? Penalty given. Or not. No, it's not. Thought for a moment he was running to that penalty spot. The linesman has come quickly onto the field to show them that it was just outside. No, he's given a penalty. He's given a penalty. So, David Peach will take this penalty. And this really is the moment where he could settle everything now for Southampton. Peach versus Hammond. 10 minutes to go. Taylor, Wall. Swindlehurst looking for something but not finding it. 
Chaloner looking for something. Oh, and that took a deflection off the Southampton defender when Jeff Johnson got his shot in. So a corner's given. Blythe arguing with everybody there in that Southampton defence. They know the prize is so near and it's really there for the taking. And they want to be so sure that they don't let it slip now. Whittle turning that one in. And Nick Holmes belting it away for Southampton. Shannon is there. Jeffries, if ever a man deserved not to be on a losing side this afternoon, it's Jeffries along with Ian Evans. Here's Johnson, now with Swindlehurst. Peter Taylor waiting in the middle. And it might come through to Chatterton, no. Evans coming up, and Palace know they've got to spring everybody forward now. They've got to take the most enormous risks of the back in the hope of pulling something out of the bag at the other end of the field. Jim Clooney on the left, on the coaching staff, Laurie McManamy knows that there are about eight minutes left. And I think even Terry Venables, fighter though he is, knows that it's going to take a tremendous overturn now to uh, pull this one round. Long ball, Shannon streaking after it. And this time he's got the beating of Evans, is this the one for Shannon? Oh, and what a miss! Down he goes, on his knees, perhaps knowing that it may not be absolutely vital with just four minutes to go. But Shannon put through there, had time to consider everything, and put it wide of Hammond and wide of that far post. Southampton are now a matter of a minute away from Wembley. Jeffries hustled off the ball, unfairly, by Osgood. Whittle. Taylor. And there's Gilchrist. That long clearance. That's a few more seconds. And Palace know that the fairy story is almost over. A third division side won't be getting to Wembley after all for an FA Cup final. Evans with the ball. Really just the formality of playing out the last few seconds now. And Southampton know that this semi-final is almost theirs. Swindlehurst nodding it down for Nicky Chalodon. It might come through there for Holder. It might still come through again. And in fact, it was turned back by Jim Steele. than this afternoon and that feeling was right bang on the target certainly Crystal Palace it's got to be said have brought a romance and excitement again to the FA Cup this season but their day looks to be done now as the referee again looks at his watch and it's all over and Southampton are through to Wembley with goals by Paul Gilchrist the man who only came on at the last moment, and David Peach from the penalty spot. Well, there are smiles everywhere. Ian Turner, the goalkeeper, has brought us to the ball. The fans have had a tremendous day up here from the south coast. Southampton are through to the final, and as Palace go trooping off, He's going right down. In fact, all the uh, Southampton players have gone down there to salute the Southampton supporters. And it's hard to know who's the more delighted, the players or the fans, or Peter Osgood, who's helped to put Southampton through to the final on this, his own ground at Stamford Bridge. Scenes of tremendous joy. And I think that's one of the great things about the Cup this year, that whoever got through today, it was going to show the second division or the third division that they could do what the first division clubs so often do, get through to a final at Wembley. So, 
For the third time in four years, a second division side goes through to Wembley. A champagne is already waiting for them in the dressing room. They don't know it yet, but there are the bottles of champagne waiting for Southampton when they return. Hugh Fisher, the man who said, I'm not fit to play in this final, this semi-final. Let Paul Grilchrist play instead. That's inside. This is outside. The Southampton glory, and why not, in every moment of this celebration. Laurie McMenemy, the manager, who's been under a fair bit of pressure, embracing there his uh, captain, Peter Rodriguez, a fair bit of pressure earlier in this season, when Southampton could win everything at home and could win nothing away. He's probably uh, filled with more joy than anybody else. Bobby Stokes already got a sample that champagne. And I think Laurie McMenemy has shown himself to be a big man in every way. And he's coming across now to applaud the fans. And at jubilations in the dressing room, that's all very quiet. Outside, the there are a few tears there, I would have thought, in the eyes of Laurie McMenemy. They're glistening a bit, those eyes. There was a banner said Laurie loves your baby and I fancy that they think quite a bit of him as well <laughs> why do they keep calling you Royal Rovers I couldn't tell you I see in turn he's always crying jokes on him he's mad tell us again about your goal uh, well it, um, I played it one two I see about I think it was about 30 yards out and he knocked it back and it was just the opportunity and Rose to hit it and I just hit it and it, 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 bent, quite, it bent quite a wide round but I thought the keeper should have had it, you know, it, it, it was a bit late going down to the ball it, it bounced just in front of him as it went down. So. you played of course because Hugh Fisher couldn't when did you know you were going to play? Um, Thursday morning they didn't tell anyone you know, the tactical change <laughs> was it very nerve? <laughs> was it very nerve wracking out there for you? No, I didn't. I, um, I didn't really think about it. You know, I didn't really have a good first half. You know, I didn't get involved at all. You know, so I thought I better do something to. You know. It must have been fairly nerve wracking for you, David Peach, when you came to take that penalty, which obviously clinched the whole thing. Not really, as it happens, because uh, I was more nervous thinking about it this morning and in the week that if we did get a penalty, that I was going to take it. But when the penalty came, I wasn't really bothered at all. All I was concerned with was getting the back of the net. It's the first one you've ever taken for Southampton, I think. Right, yeah. Yeah, I used to take them for Gillingham, but as we missed one or two down at the Dell this year, I decided that I'd have a go. And it was today that I took it. You, you decided you were going to have a go, or did, did Laurie tell you to take it? No, they just kept saying, who's going to take the penalties? I said, I'll take them. I got a record at Gillingham where I took 19 and scored 18, so I always fancy myself. I got the best left foot in the country anyway. <laughs> Nick Holmes, that looks about the most blissful bath you could ever imagine. Yeah. I need it. I need it more than anything at the moment. Tell us about the game. <laughs> I don't remember much about it. I know we won 2-0. That's all I want to know as well. Right. Mike Shannon, that champagne looks as though it might be a bit useful. Tonight, tonight Brian, I think there'll be plenty of it, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that. What did you think of the game? It went well from our point of view, you know. I mean, I thought we were always the side that looked most likely to score. I mean, they looked quite dangerous on their free kicks, which we thought they would be before the game. But basically, it went <coughs> the way we thought. You know, we thought we could uh, sort of cause them a bit of problems by changing the play and getting in, which, which we did, which our first goal came from. Great goal. When people see the likes of uh, Mick Shannon and Peter Osgood in the side, they're a little surprised to find the first and devastating goal coming from Paul Gilchrist. Well, this is, I mean, this is, I mean, he's a good player and people don't realise that. People don't give the likes of Paul Gilchrist and David Peach and, and Jim Steele and, and Mel Bly, they don't give them the credit that they deserve, you know. I mean, you don't get to the cup final through being sort of mugs, do you? And, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're bloody good players and, I mean, that's the reason we're, we're at the final, Brian. You were talking to me earlier this week about the fear of losing, the fear of things going wrong. Was there much fear out there? You never told me that. I, I don't think there's any fear once the game gets started, Brian, but I think the week before, you know, I think that everyone was edgy, you know, 
and, and Mel was, uh, you know, Mel, Malcolm Allison was, was very confident. But I think it's all a front. I don't think, I think basically he had that fear, you know, deep down that he was frightened of, of getting beat, which I did, you know, I'll be honest with you. And, you know, it, you don't know, it's the unknown and it, it slaughters you, honest. It, it burns at you. And I think that's the, that's the only, that's what I would mean by the unknown, you know? Did you get the winner of the national? No, I didn't. I, got, I fancy the third a bit, you know, but uh, I didn't get the winner. I was, I was back. You got him, Pete, did you? Yes, I backed the winner, yeah. Back to winner today as well. Fourth final, unbelievable, wasn't it? Only 23 and all, Brian. <laughs> Can't be bad. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. Was it something special coming back to Stamford Bridge and doing it? I enjoyed it much more this time, Brian. Last time I came back, you know, and uh, it was a bit of an anticlimax, you know, and I didn't enjoy it at all. I enjoyed myself today. Uh, it's the first time I played up front for a long time again, and and they told me to sort of unsettle the big fella if I could, you know. And uh, it went well for us. I enjoyed it. I really did, you know. And uh, I didn't score. But it's the first time I've enjoyed a game for a long, long time. I had nerves before the game, which I you know, haven't had for a long time. And uh, I think, you know, this is all the build-up to the game. We had a nice week at Frinton, you know, relaxing. And, and it was the right place. Everything was nice. It was nice and quiet. Homely sort of effect, you know. And we enjoyed it. And we enjoyed ourselves today. And uh, Malcolm was right. It's a fun game. For you now. Oh, magic. Oh, you enjoyed it, didn't you? It is there. It's a fun game now. Oh, yeah, it's not finished yet, Brian. You know, the thing is now you've got... There's no point in getting to the Wembley and bloody losing. We've got to get there. We've got to win it now. That's the... You know, I mean, all right, it's all right to celebrate now. We should probably celebrate for another day or so. And uh, But the thing is now we've got to win the bloody thing. As a game one, it was a, a sort of a non-event game. You know, there was no real good attacking play. And uh, I was a little disappointed with our performance today. Yeah. You said it was going to be a fun game, but in fact, as you say, it was a very disappointing game. Yeah, I, I was a bit surprised that they were so uptight, you know, about the game. But probably they're a bit young, and uh, it was a big occasion for them. How serious was the Peter Taylor injury? Yeah, it was a nasty injury. You know, he's got kicked right across the top of the knee, and Peter Wall got uh, kicked on top of the thigh, and Phil Holder got kicked on top of the thigh. You know, it was one or two nasty, um, nasty knocks. Were you, are you questioning the way Southampton played? No, I mean, uh, the referee, he's, he's supposed to be a good referee, you know, so I can't question his decisions. One of the features of the run has been the hat, which you're not wearing now. Is that hat ever going to be worn again? No, I, um, I might sell it to some charity, you know, <laughs> give it away, you know. I don't know, really, no. Um, if it can raise some money for charity somewhere, you know, I'll give it to some charity. But you won't wear it again? No, I won't wear it again. You look the way you feel, I should think, uh, Derek, very disappointed. Hey? Well, I think my dead leg's moved to my heart at the moment, and, and that's sick. Of... You had a dead leg in the week when you uh, yeah. looked as though you might be doubtful for the game. Yeah, I and mean, it's moved right up to my heart now. You've taken it that badly? Pardon? You've taken it that badly? Well, I'm not pleased about it, Brian. You know? <laughs> so, oh, I'm well sick. Everybody is, you know, but you can sense it. It's just lousy. Do you feel that the side as a whole, Malcolm's just said that he thought that the side was a little disappointing from what it can be, that you played well enough to stay in the cup? Well, it was a bad game, but we, we did, I don't think we should have gotten late 2-0. It was, you know, we had a great chance and we didn't play any worse than them and they scored two goals. I think that's the biggest disappointment of the lot, getting beat 2-0 to, to a team that didn't play well. And you handled uh, Shannon and Osgood particularly well, both of you. Well, I thought Ian was brilliant in the air. He never, you know, it, but... <laughs> have another drink. You can have uh, <laughs> it really has hit you, hasn't it? <laughs> no, no. No, people may laugh, but it really has. It's really hurt. Oh, it's choked, it? yeah. Do you feel equally as bad, Ian? Oh, yes. People say we've done great to get this far, but it doesn't take away from the fact how disappointed everybody is, you know, to lose this game. Especially out there today, we didn't deserve, no, it was a, a naught naught would have been a, we could have had another chance. We all feel that we was worth another chance. That's it, that's the way it is. But the last word with Southampton's Laurie McMenemy, who just knew this was his winning day. I did, honestly, I, I, I felt so good this morning, uh, I thought it wasn't true, you know, I thought I should feel different, but um, to be fair, Malcolm said this during the week, he said it to you, that it mattered how we uh, players felt, and uh, it made me realise even more so that uh, we had to be stable, and we had to have a fit on the ground on the day, and I think that um, I worked very hard this morning at, at being in the right sort of frame of mind, for the players and 
it worked out very well. Did you feel you'd always got it in hand, though, Laurie? I felt that we controlled the football in bit, but we I was a bit um, perturbed when we couldn't get a goal in the first half because I always felt that uh, they were dangerous on long balls to, to Peter Taylor and uh, set pieces. Uh, uh, we nearly got something in the first minute. Do you remember? One, one last little thing in a few seconds. Were there Sorry. a few tears in the eyes when you went to your supporters at the end? Yeah, there was. There was. I've got so many, so many things. It was like a drowning man. Everything flashed before me, and and uh, I shed a few tears for people that weren't here as much as those that were. Well, a few tears, and why not? But also one or two moments of controversy as well that I think we ought to clear up. And one of them, of course.